Right, welcome back. Part two showed the four steps for entering any command using the basic play and stop commands as examples. So now we'll look at recording. This needs a certain degree of timing accuracy when pressing the keys, so the virtual keyboard isn't the ideal choice. But I don't want to force you to connect a real keyboard yet, so we'll only record a couple of notes just to show the idea. And if trying to click a mouse in time is hard enough, the sluggish response or latency of the internal Microsoft synth means there's going to be a lot of outtakes in this video. So please bear this in mind. A real keyboard and an external or snappier sound device will make this so much easier. As before, follow the steps. Press Command. Press the Sequence Select keys for the sequences on which you want to record. There's nothing to stop you recording on multiple sequences if you want, but we'll just use sequence 2 for now. Now press record. Right, we're now in record primed mode, and all the keys marked R are recordable notes. The others, and there are two in this case, are special controls which we'll look at later. Now the recording won't start until you press any key except escape. If you press escape now, it will cancel the recording with no harm done, nothing is overwritten. But once the recording starts, the selected sequence or sequences will be overwritten. This means you don't need to delete them explicitly before recording. Now if you've tried recording before, you'll know how important it is to line up the start and stop times on musical boundaries, especially if you want to loop a sequence or synchronise it with others. If you don't get this right, you'll get a glitch at the end of each loop and they'll all drift apart. Now the Secatron has a couple of quantization tricks to make this easier. And in keeping with the design aim of spontaneity, you don't have to decide up front how long the recording is going to be. You decide during the recording by pressing a special key whenever you feel the recording should stop. This gives you complete freedom to create sequences of any length on the fly all perfectly synchronised. Obviously the timing of the stop key is important, so you may need some practice, but the knack is to press it at the point where the sequence would restart if it was looping, if that makes sense. So for a four beat sequence, you would start on the one beat, count two, three, four, and press stop on the next one beat. So let's do it. Now as the timing is critical, and we are up against it with the virtual keyboard and the Microsoft synth will cheat and slow the tempo down a bit. Now again I'll do this in configuration mode. I'll press stop, configure the tempo, I'll try 100 and run. Now normally if you wanted to change the tempo you would do it on the fly using the tempo command over here. But we'll be covering that in the next part. Now we're ready. Start the audible metronome. Command, sequence one, play. We'll prepare sequence two. Command, sequence two, record. And we just enter the notes followed by the stop key. Now I'll try and play four half notes to make an eight beat sequence. And I'll stop the recording with the escape key. One. Two, three, four, one. Now the recording stopped. This length indicator shows it's two bars, and you can judge by the scaling of the display, it's twice as long as the metronome one bar sequence. I'll set this playing, and we can see what it sounds like. Command, sequence two, Although it's a different length to the previous sequence, it's still synchronising on cycle boundaries. I'll try recording a shorter two beat sequence now on sequence three. So we go command, sequence three, record. You can see from the display that it's half the length of the 
one bar sequence one, or the numeric indicator shows it's four eighth notes. We'll set it playing. So now all three sequences are in sync, even though they're different lengths. I'll stop them all. Select all three and then press the command. Right, now for something more impressive, I hope. We'll look at that other control key in record mode called play. Now if we press this while recording, it stops the recording and then does what it says on the tin. It starts the sequence playing as if you'd use the normal play command. In other words, it plays and loops forever. If you hit the key at the right time, the switchover will be seamless. So let's start sequence one. And we'll record something onto sequence two, and this time we'll hit play. Command, sequence two, record. Okay, we're primed, ready to go. Notice that sequence two has still got the original contents. They won't get overwritten until we commit the recording. OK, it may have sounded a bit ragged to start with, but the quantizator tries to fix it and brings everything into line. Command, sequence one, sequence two, stop. So musically, not very exciting, I'm afraid, but given the limitations of the virtual keyboard, I think you get the idea. Now, just a point about the control options in record mode. You can see we've currently got escape and play functions. There are many other variations, and we'll see them when we turn off novice mode. For example, there's a mute to option, which stops the recording and starts it running in muted state for two cycles and then unmutes it. This is all automatic, so you can be playing along quite nonchalantly and the sequence will magically kick in. OK, that's it for basic recording. You can record anything you like, rests, single notes, chords, pitch bends. Just bear in mind the design aims covered in part two there is nothing to stop you recording very long sequences, but you may find this impractical with the current lack of editing and scrolling facilities. However, there are lots more playback options to spice up even the shortest of sequences. So if you're OK with that, thanks again for watching, and see you in part four where we'll look at tempo, pitch and mute, and we'll also take off the novice L plates.